Hey there, and welcome back to this small video series about rock, paper, and scissor. So we talked about the game in the previous video and the structure in UML, and also looked at some of the source code. So in this video, we will just clone the repo uh, onto IntelliJ, and you can copy this, uh, this link for GitHub. And then IntelliJ have uh, a way that you can make a new project from version control. And that's what I've done here. I've pasted in the information there, and then it will clone the repository. Then you will get the source code file, uh, all the files for the project, and we can see that I've made a configuration called run main that has the main file or the main class that will start the program. We also provided uh, some of the VM options that will tell us what modules we want to use with this project. So we will use JavaFX, even though we only have a really simple JavaFX front end. Okay. And finally, we also have, uh, I set up the libraries, the dependencies uh, in the library here. We can see we have JavaFX. And you can also do this in Maven, of course, uh, if you want to do that. Okay, so first off, if we take a quick uh, look at the main file, we can see that we have the main method here, and it's rather simple. We just have two method calls here, start RPS console game and start RPS JavaFX. And uh, we have implemented the console game, so that is working more or less. And uh, there is also um, a hook here. We could say that uh, we'll start a Java fx version of it it is not implemented though so this is where you can start off uh, to make the the java fx version but if we have a look at the console game and we start the program then we can see that we get this uh, rather simple uh, console look that will just use the terminal it says welcome to the classic rock paper scissor game type in your name and our opponent is Bishop. Okay, so that is the name for our AI. And then we're starting the game. We can either use, uh, we can type in rock, R, paper, P, scissor, S, or exit E to navigate in the game. So if we do paper, it says that we won over Bishop because Bishop takes rock. Okay, that's nice. So we can take P again. All right, so it still, still takes P. Apparently it takes P every time. So not that advanced AI we have here. So if I go with scissor, probably I will lose then. Yeah. So there is not much um, decision making in this AI here. We can have a look at this uh, in a minute. But this is the basic way it works, that we have these rounds and we have the winner and we also have the loser and the moves. So if I exit, we can see we get some game stats and then we don't have it because it has not been implemented yet. So maybe this could be fixed in the future. Maybe you can fix it. Okay, so let's have a look at the basic. Let's just figure it. Let's take a look at the player here because we had a rather simple AI there. And if we go to RPS, BLL and player, we can see we've implemented one player. We have the interface right here, public interface I player. And we have the do move. That's the most interesting method there. And if we take a look at the player that will implement the iPlayer, so we need to override uh, the different method that we had defined in the interface. Then we have the do move. That is probably the most interesting method here because this will decide the next move for the bot. And we can see that this is the reason why Bishop only chose rock because it is pretty simple in the decision making here. We don't do any decision making. So maybe an improved version could be to randomize it. Maybe even more improved could be that we take a look at the historic data because we have this I game state that will allow us to analyze this, the previous moves and the previous results. And then we can Maybe we can see some uh, patterns in the way that the opponent works, so we can choose better than just rock. Okay, so in the end here, um, whoop, 
If we go to the main, as I stated, we have the RPS console game. We also have a Java FX. And if we just try to run that version here, we can see that we have Java FX app launch. And that is in the GUI and package here. If we take a look at the Java FX, we have a really simple, let's just remove the terminal there. We have a boilerplate code that will load uh, a simple game view FXML file, and then it's going to uh, display that. We also have a controller and this view here. So if we launch the game again, we can see that when it shows up, then we can see that we have an empty JavaFX uh, window. Welcome to the not implemented rock, paper, scissor game. Now you can start to build the GUI and implement an awesome game. So that is the second task uh, besides implementing players and implementing AIs that you can, uh, you should make uh, a JavaFX front end for this uh, game. All right, I think this is uh, all I wanted to uh, talk about in this uh, small video about the Rock, Paper, Scissor game demonstration. I hope you make this work and have fun with this. Bye-bye.